Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have uh, a nice Breitling, a Breitling Chronomat, and uh, you will see this, wa this watch has a lot of issues. Um, so we'll see uh, which kind of issue we have on the watch and try to address them. But first we're gonna check if this watch is working correctly. You can see the beautiful dial uh, with this uh, deep red color. Just gonna check now if uh, by turning the hands if the date is jumping at midnight as it should. And yeah, we just passed midnight, that's not good. And wow, the date is jumping around like four o'clock. That's uh, not good. So we'll have to change that when we service a watch. Obviously uh, we want the date to change at midnight. We have the quick side date there, which is functioning um, as well. So it's a, a Breitling chronomat. So it means we have a, a chronograph you see on it. Now I just started the chronograph just to see if it's working and reset. Okay, we're just gonna remove this uh, bracelet there. Just remove the two spring, the two spring bar. And we should see the case back. There we go. See a lot of uh, inscription on it. And uh, just open it there with my rubber ball. It was not a lot, uh, not very tight. So I just managed to open it with my uh, rubber ball there. And let's see what we can find inside. Wow, that looks like uh, Valju 7750, yeah? And look at the amount of play. Okay, we'll look at it later, but uh, first we put a watch on a chronograph and you can see the watch is losing 56 seconds a day. Uh, that's a lot. And the uh, amplitude is quite low uh, at 240. So yeah, this watch definitely needs a service with the wrong date, low amplitude, and look at the bearing, look at the amount of play that there is. So we'll have to change this uh, ball bearing there uh, because that's not good. Obviously, you will have a lot of friction with the, with the weight around the around the case there. So we change that at the end. Just now I'm gonna remove the rotor. Just take out the screw there. See the movement is beating. Just gonna remove the two case clamp. That's holding the movement inside the case. Here's the second one, just removing the winding stem there. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Just by turning the case around, we should be able to lift it up. There we go. And see this, look at beautiful dial, like this uh, deep red color, like a bit uh, like, like a wine, a red uh, a wine. Um, so I'm just aligning the hand to midnight, just using my Presto tool there, just to remove the hand. Always, you see, protect the dial with uh, this uh, plastic cover that just to make sure the dial doesn't get scratched while you remove the hand. And we have the hand which are on the sub counter there. So for the chronograph or the running second of the time. So that's both from the chronograph. And this is a running second on the side, which is always turning. I'm just gonna put them with the other hand in this box. And now we're gonna release the dial. Where I'm using my carbon tweezer tips there. Just very gently lifting it up. I'm gonna put it in this uh, in this little box there, just made specially for to store dials. Okay, so now we are on a, on a caliber there. Just gonna start this assemble on the dial side. You see the calendar mechanism. This watch has a calendar date. Ooh, that's a, a low spring there. Whoop! Oh, it just jumped there. <laughs> the the date. Yeah, it just jumped, but it didn't go very far, it's just here. Go, you see the spring is uh, holding two parts at the same time. It's the date jumper there. You go, I'm removing the date ring. And we have this huge plate on top of it there, which is uh, holding all the parts. I can remove now that I remove the three little screws. Perfect. And you see there on this side, you still start to have the like, uh, some chronograph parts. So this is uh, our, it was our wheel from the chronograph and we still have other parts from the mechanism. So the hour wheel, the minute wheel that we remove, the cannon pinion. That's the parts again from the chronograph. And this wheel, which is friction mounted there. So I'm just going to use my lever that I use for the hands just to remove this wheel. And now we move to the other side, to the balance. Just gonna remove this huge spring there which
put the tension in the chronograph mechanism. Just need to lift it up. It's a very, very strong spring on a on a seven on a Valjou uh, 7550. It's like very strong spring. I just need to make sure it, I just lift it up there. If you want to, yeah, there we go. That's it. J very gently, you see, brings the spring. Another one here. And now that the spring is removed, we can uh, disassemble the parts. And we have the first bridge. And then underneath there, we'll have uh, parts that are for the winding mechanism. Wow, that's just jump. It was a little spring there. That's one. That's a second one here and you see that oh wow this one looks like the pivot is missing on the top so we'll have a look a bit later but uh, looks like the reversing wheel uh, had the broken pivot so again another issue uh, obviously that part is very important for the automatic winding and here removing few parts from the chronograph again a strong spring there so intermediate wheel for the minute wheel of the chronograph. We have the connecting rod. A spring here underneath, like in between, like the plates that uh, gives attention to the pushers. Just gonna remove now the main piece here, the balance wheel. Party four bridge. You can see the ETA and uh, written seven seven five zero, which is a number again of this caliber, which is a very well known caliber from uh, Valjou. And Valjou was bought by ETA, so that's why, like on the uh, latest model now, is uh, written ETA. Uh, but this is a very very iconic chronograph movement. Uh, they made a lot of them, and uh, for nice brand like for example for for Breitling. Um, and there is a, a different variation of these uh, calibers with date, without date, with uh, day, um, a lot of other uh, extra complication. Um, it's a very, very well known, very robust. You can find a lot of parts for these movements. And uh, being a, a Valjou or ETA still in production, um, yes, yeah, the parts are not so expensive. Uh, so if you have any issues uh, with the parts, it will not cost you a fortune to replace one of the parts, for example. You, we saw that the reversing wheel, like the pivot of the reversing wheel was broken and the parts was not that expensi expensive to replace. So that's the advantage to have uh, a chronograph mechanism uh, from a, a well-known manufacturer and that produce a lot of movement. Obviously, it's not an in-house caliber like, uh, a, lot of, uh, like a lot of uh, brands are doing right now, like for example, Omega or, or Rolex with their own movement. Uh, now, Breitling as well is doing uh, obviously their own movement. Uh, parts are more expensive and uh, more difficult to find if you don't work directly with the brands. Uh, but yeah, a Valjou 7750, you will find a lot of parts and they are not so expensive to, to buy. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove, you see, like the stone there, the rubies from uh, the balance assembly. Just remove the spring first, open it to get access to these stones that are gonna be clean in the machine individually. Just do the same thing on the other side, on the dial side. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Just like the capstone here. And we have uh, still have the keyless work to disassemble. First, we have these parts on top, which cover like a lot of the parts underneath. We see some uh, intermediate wheel there, the yoke. Pretty standard there, a bit different uh, conception around the spring, like the yoke spring, you see like this. Uh, now the yoke just wiggling around just to make sure it comes. Yeah, here we go. And we have the spring, that's the spring I was talking about different concep conception, but uh, yeah, does the same job at the end. Just gonna open the main spring barrel assembly to clean the main spring inside. 
just lifting it up there. You see, I just open it with a sharp uh, blade because opening is right in the middle of uh, not the lid, which is open on the top. Removing the barrel arbor and the spring. Just gonna take out the spring. Again, just to make sure each single part get clean, all the grease and uh, dust and everything I can go inside the movement get removed during cleaning. So that's why we did assemble all the parts from this movement. And you see being a chronograph uh, is quite a lot of parts. And uh, all these parts are going into these baskets and uh, we're gonna put these baskets in, in a cleaning machine. And after this, all the parts uh, will be uh, clean and ready to, to be uh, reassembled back on the, on the movement. There we go. And now just closing the baskets. Perfect. So we're going to clean the parts in different, uh, in different steps. First one, we do a cleaning and after it will be two winching and the last steps will be a drying. And I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page. You can find the link down below in the description. And uh, I would like to thank my existing patrons. So Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corne, Alan, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim and Gregory. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for supporting me. And if you want to join the group, support the channel, we help me to put some better content out there and keep me motivated. You just can find the link down below in the description and you can go there and subscribe to one of the plans of your choice. Yeah. So thanks in advance. Okay, so now the parts are dry and uh, ready to go back onto the, onto the movement and being reassembled. Okay, well, so first we're gonna focus on the case. Disassemble all the parts. Uh, obviously being a chronograph, you will have the pushers. So that's what I'm doing now, right now. I'm screwing like uh, the screws that keep the pusher, the tube in place. Just gonna do the same thing on the second one. And all these parts will be uh, clean in an ultrasonic machine. Just to make sure we remove the dirt. We just do the second one there. Quite tricky always to uh, to remove these screws inside, and we have the spring that keep uh, that really put the tension inside the pusher when you push on it. And on this uh, watch, you will have like a very iconic design with uh, all these uh, screws on the, on a bezel on a hour indicator. So it need to remove each single one again to make sure everything get clean. Now I can remove the bezel. The spring inside, do the click for the bezel, and uh, all of these parts was uh, clean in a ultrasonic machine. And now I'm just uh, starting to reassemble the different parts on the caliber. But first, we need to do a epilam treatments so we keep the oil that I'm going to put because yeah, when we reassemble a watch, uh, obviously we need to put all the parts in the right order. But what's important uh, with all these clean parts is to re-oil each parts. And you see now I'm starting to oil uh, the jewel from the balance assembly. And the epilam treatment will help the oil to be retained in the right spot. Uh, so that's why we do a treatment on a couple of parts. And uh, now putting a drop of 9010, uh, which is a, a low viscosity oil. And you see now the balance, the balance staff uh, will be like uh, right in the oil, which is a uh, in these jewels, just can close the spring. Just do the same thing on the other side, which we have uh, already oil the jewel there, and just closing the spring. There we go, perfect. And we can see the balance is beating quite good. Um, the spring was actually not perfectly flat, um, so what I'm going right now, I'm just unscrewing this uh, little tiny screw, just to touch. Um, the hair spring uh, stud there just to make the spring flat because that's where you will get the best result after when your watch is beating with uh, hair spring which is perfectly flat uh, so that's it now it's done we know the balance is fully oiled with uh, flat hair spring so we can carry on the assembly now I'm just rewinding the mainspring I'm just going to reuse the mainspring that was in the watch 
So I'm using this set from version to rewind the main spring. And being an automatic, you see this uh, shape at the end, this Y shape that will put some friction on the wall of the barrel. Okay, now I'm just gonna remove this uh, lever there that uh, was used to, to wind the, the mainspring. And inside, we'll find the mainspring fully wind, ready to go back inside the barrel. But first we need to put some grease. So I'm going to put some graphite grease on the wall there because like I said, it's an automatic watch. So the mainspring will keep rotating and uh, on this wall, so that's why we need to be greased. And the same on the bottom before we put, here we go, the mainspring. Gonna put the barrel arbor in position. Greasing the top there, the top lid before we close. Here we go, perfect, now it can be closed. Just gonna use special tool there to close it. I'm just gonna put it in there and with a cora, just a gentle push on it and that it is closed. Okay, we're gonna assemble first the keyless work. So obviously being a Valju 7750, there is a lot of uh, documentation out there and uh, you, can, you can find the technical documentation how to disassemble and reassemble this movement um, in which order you need to disassemble and put back the parts, but as well which type of oil you need to use and where you need to put it. So that's uh, very important information. And obviously we, when you can find this type of uh, document, uh, it makes the reassembly uh, much easier. Uh, especially a, a, a Valju 7 or ETA 7, 750. It's not a, a simple movement uh, being with a, a chronograph, automatic, with a date in this case. Um, it's quite a lot of parts and having the, the documentation, yeah, it's a, it's a huge bonus. Even, like I said, if you are a professional and you have a lot of, uh, you, you probably have done a lot of uh, 7750 uh, because, like, like I said, this uh, movement was produced uh, in huge quantities and you can find it in a, on a lot of uh, watches. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's good to use uh, the proper documentation because yeah, sometimes obviously you will forget to oil this point or to uh, maybe disassemble or reassemble parts in a, in a wrong order. So yeah, it's always nice to follow a procedure, uh, make stuff easier and for sure it will be perfect at the end. Just putting like this part, you see, I did not fully screw this uh, screw there. Just gonna screw this one first and finish. You see now up oh, the second one. Putting like some heavy grease there. You see the blue, that's a blue grease, which is a high viscosity grease. Cause this part will see a lot of uh, tension between them, a lot of strength. strength. Um, so yeah, that's why we put this, uh, this grease just to make sure the part don't wear. Obviously that they move between each other nicely and they don't wear too much. I'm just removing the excess of grease. Perfect. Okay, we move to the balance. Put the barrel assembly that we assembled with uh, the main spring inside already. And now putting back the train of wheel. And the job of the train of wheel, you see, is connect the source of the power, which is the main spring barrel, to the time regulating of the watch, which is uh, the balance. Uh, and the pallet fork, so you, that's the job of the train of wheel and all these wheel connected to each other. Now I'm gonna put the bridge on top there and you see it went straight in, like all the, all the wheels underneath went in, into their pivot hole straight away, that's uh, very nice. Can tighten the screws. And now we can start to assemble the rest of the parts. Some chronograph parts on the top and some part as well, uh, like on a standard watch, we have the ratchet wheel, the crown wheel, now we are putting in, pos in place with these two screws. You see me oil as well there with uh, a red oil, which is a medium viscosity oil. Okay putting now the ratchet wheel.
Now the pallet fork is going in position, finding the right place in the jewel there, putting the bridge on top. Need to go very gently there. Ugh, it's quite tricky to go under the spring, which is on top there. And just need to make sure everything is aligned, gently moving it. Oh, there we go. It just went into the pivot point, into the ruby there. And now it's secure in place with the two screws. Okay, now the moment of truth and see if the movement want to start by putting the balance in position. Obviously, we oil the pallet fork, put a bit of a wine on the watch, put uh, some power inside. And we are going to gently bring the balance assembly in position. Again, we just need to make sure like everything is aligned. Just nudging it around ever so slightly. Yes, perfect started yeah okay can secure that with a screw again look at it beating like nicely gonna oil all the jewel with different oil depending on the, on the wheel underneath some medium viscosity oil some high uh, low viscosity oil depending on the speed of rotation of the wheels just do the same thing on a calendar on a dial side sorry and now we have a beating movement. We can uh, start assembling the complication. So the first one will be the chronograph. So I'm putting this uh, cam spring in position because this is a cam operated uh, chronograph, not a colon wheel. So this is a cam there, which is more or less the brain of the chronograph, which is uh, the part that will move and make all the parts move in, uh, in sync to make sure the chronograph Start, stop, and reset depending on where you when you are pushing on where you are pushing on the pushers. So here we go now. Carry on building the first layer because you see like on his movement there is different layers. Spring there for the chronograph wheel, the brake. Keep in place with a screw. And we can put like a plate on top just to make sure like again everything is aligned. All the wheels underneath. And now we can build another layer on top of it with more parts. First we're going to put the spring in position. That's for the pushers. Here we go. Connecting rod, arming the spring there from the brake. And you see me again oiling all the points, like I said. The oil has, a, has to function just to make sure on a chronograph as well. That's very important on a chronograph. Um, that's all the parts are working smoothly, like the operation, like it's smooth. Uh, so that's why you oil each point uh, just to make sure there is not too much friction between the parts and sometimes if you don't oil the parts they will stop moving or they will get stuck so that's why you want to oil ah and you see there the broken uh, reversing wheel the pivot on the top is missing i was talking at the beginning so yeah like i said the oil will help the parts to move freely uh, and as well it will reduce the wear because uh, if you have a lot of parts which are metal against metal uh, if there is too much friction, they will wear much quicker and uh, after you will need to replace or you will have a, a broken watch. Um, so yeah, that's why you need to do a service uh, at regular interval just to make sure like all the parts are clean, reassemble and re-oil properly for your watch to run as smooth as the first day. Yeah. Okay, putting the minute wheel from the chronograph there, oiling the cam, that's uh, part of the chronograph wheel that will be used to reset the chronograph to zero. That's the center chronograph wheel where we have the second end of the chronograph which get attached to. And here we have the clutch. Quite tricky to put in position. So we need to align like little wheel like with a very tiny pivot there on these parts there we go that's it that's in position oiling the pivot point 
Now I'm going to put the parts as for the winding mechanism. We have the hammer here that I'm oiling all the points which are critical for the hammer. Again, that's a very important part because that's a part that will reset um, the hands, the chronograph hand when you, when you push a reset button. And you see the new wheel there with the pivot on top. Uh, I'm just doing a treatment in Lubeta. That's a special uh, treatment for reversing wheels just to make sure they are nicely lubricated and that they run properly. And now I can put the new wheel in position with the old one obviously being broken. You remember with the top pivot missing, you see that's uh, this little pointy hand on the top there. Okay, and now I need to align the bottom pivot on a pivot on a hole there. There we go. And we can put another bridge in position. Now we finish a layer, aligning everything underneath. And when it is, we just secure everything with the screws. And you remember this huge spring, like very strong one, uh, that we put a tension in the chronograph mechanism. Okay, so now we're gonna pull it in position. There we go, perfect. Finally, lubrication. We have another spring to install as well. There we go, that's this one. Just need to go, just push it in. Yeah, that's it. And now just checking the chronograph. You see, you will have the start stop there. It's working nicely. We see the cam moving left, right. And now that's a reset. And you see all the parts, the hammer, like tack, getting in position. Yeah. Everything is working, everything is smooth. So we can move to the rest of the mechanism and uh, to the die side where we're gonna assemble the next complication, which is a calendar complication, oiling all the pivot point. You remember this wheel was uh, friction mounted, so we're gonna press it in position with this tool, perfect. Cannon pinion, all the intermediate wheel there, minute wheel, that's a wheel for the calendar mechanism, our wheel on top, and that's a calendar driving wheel. And on this side of the movement, uh, we will have the different part for the chronograph again. So we see we have some parts on the balance side, but we have parts as well on the dial side from the chronograph. So this is uh, our wheel from the chronograph. So basically on this side, we'll have all the parts that uh, drive the hour, the hour wheel of the chronograph. So that starts, stop and reset uh, the hour, hour wheel. So we have a hammer here like we had on the other side, but obviously only for the hour wheel. You see me there, it's a lot of lubrification on these movements, a lot of pivot points, parts interacting with each other. Um, there, that's a spring that will put the tension in the movement on this side. And now that all the parts are assembled, we can put this bridge on top. You remember it's secured with these three little screws gonna screw down and we have a day jumper replicating it right now I could put a, and actually that's a jumper for I will switch them after but that's a jumper for the day normally and not a date so I will uh, switch them around that's the one that's supposed to go for the date and not the day and uh, yeah now I close with this plate there goes the two screws that's a setting date the quick setting date mechanism 
and we have this last plate keeping the disc and a couple of parts in position. If you want to align properly there, there we go. Perfect. Just checking now the mechanism. Okay, we have the quick say date functioning. Just gonna turn now, If just if I'm changing the hour, and we should see the day jumping, perfect. Now we have a nice jump. Okay, looks like the calendar mechanism is working perfectly, so we can put this beautiful dial back in position. Obviously, I did not touch anything on the dial. It was in perfect condition, so uh, nothing to do with, uh, with the dial. Just placing it back very gently with my uh, carbon, tip, uh, carbon tip tweezers, pushing it in. Yes, that's it. Just closing there the part that keeps the dial fit in position and the dial in position. Just making the date jump there. Where is the jump? Yes, there. So it means when the date is jumping, it's midnight. You remember the date was changing at four o'clock. So that's how you set the date properly for a jump at midnight. You just make your date switch, align our hand to midnight, press it in position, do the same thing with the minute hand. And if you do that properly, normally you should have a jump around midnight. I like to have it between minus five and plus five minutes around midnight. But we're gonna check there. Just, okay, make the time change. And when we're gonna go close to midnight, gonna slow down and see when the date is jumping. You see it's coming there. And it jump. wow, it just jumped like one minute before midnight. So that's perfect, yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I like to have it five between uh, minus five and plus five, but yeah, one minute just before is perfect. Okay, I'm putting now the hand from the chronograph. So first the second, again, we align it to midnight, the zero position, press it in. Gonna do the same thing on the sub counter hand, just checking now if the reset is proper and go back to the zero. Just gonna let it run a bit gonna stop it, you're gonna do a reset, and normally the second end should go back to 12 o'clock. Yeah, perfect. That's a running second from the time, not the chronograph, so it's always turning. We are gonna align again on 12 o'clock there, that's a hour from the chronograph. I'm gonna do the same thing for the minute hand from the chronograph. Again, we're gonna align it to the zero position, which is a top position. Yes. And we're gonna press it in uh, in place to make sure it doesn't move. Okay, so let's check the chronograph and see if all the hands are moving. Gonna speed it up just a tiny bit because or else it will take too long. We should see the minute, you see the minute ticking. We should see as well the hour hand, which is moving ever so slightly because being an hour hand, it takes a lot longer. And let's check the reset. Yes, all the hand went back to zero, perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna focus on a case. Remember, we just cleaned it in an ultrasonic machine after disassembling everything. So we're gonna put back all the parts now on, uh, from the case. Obviously, the crystal in position. I'm gonna use my uh, press there to press the crystal. Yeah, that's it, it's in position. We're gonna reassemble the bezel by putting first the spring. That does uh, gives a nice click. Putting the bezel, and you remember it was all these uh, golden screws and uh, our indicator around the bezel. So we'll have to put them one by one, each single one. That's quite a, a lot of uh, screws to put in position. So I put the first one there. You see me like, uh, and that's the last one. Our indicator on top at 12 o'clock. There we go. Just gonna lubricate the new O-ring that we put in uh, in the tube, in the crown, in the tube for the pushers, for the chronograph pushers. Putting back the screws that keep in place the tube and, uh, I mean the pusher, sorry. Just need to do it on the first one and the second one. Quite tricky always because you always have an angle with your screwdriver 
uh, not so easy to do. And that's the second one. I just put a screen position. Now that the case is fully assembled, we can place it back on a, on a movement, put a winding stem, just introduce it gently inside. I'm just gonna switch over. Just press there to finish, put the winding stem in position. Yeah, that's it. Just gonna screw the crown. We're gonna finish securing the movement with the two case clamp. Uh, that's the first one with the putting the screw there. We're gonna do the second one. And after we're gonna focus on the rotor for the winding system, you remember the ball bearing was totally wore down. So yeah, it was quite tricky to find the right uh, piece for this, uh, for this bearing because it's a special bearing. Just gonna remove it there with my stacking set, that's it. Just gonna hammer a new one in position. And now I'm gonna put the rotor with the new bearing and we should not have any play anymore on the, on the movement. Just gonna find yeah, the position. Yeah, it was almost there. Yeah, that's it. Gonna secure it with the screw. And let's check the play. No more play, perfect. And look at it, it's turning very nicely. And this mechanism is only winding in one direction, uh, the 7750. Putting a new seal on the back of the move of the case. And now we can close the case. Okay, if you like this tool, that's a very nice tool for Morotech uh, to close and open a case back. I put a link down below in the description. I put a link as well of most of the tools that I use in a video, but if you have any question on the tools, just put a comment down below in the description and I'll be more than happy to reply to your questions. Okay, I want to tell you as well that I have my own website where I'm selling some of the watch, uh, telling you uh, about the channel as well a bit. Um, some of the watch that I've restored on the channel are on sale on this website, so you can go have a look and if you find a nice watch, just uh, you, can, you can reach me. And as well, I propose the service uh, for, for your watch. Again, if you want me to service your watch, like for example, this Breitling, you can go there, contact me, and I will be very happy to service your watch. And here is the result on the time grapher from this uh, Breitling Chronomat. You see the amplitude was around 240, now it's at 320, which is much, much better. And the watch is almost gaining or losing no second a day. The beat error is at 0 0.1. Fantastic result on his service. And his watch now will be running for many, many years and keep good time for a long time. And this is the final product, the final, uh, the final result of the watch. I hope you like this service and I see you next time for my next video. Bye bye.